Hopefully your studying is going well for your trig test. I'm going to give you some quick uh, solutions here and hopefully this helps. Let's make some space here first. Uh, first topic here, arc length. Hopefully you know how to connect arc length with uh, radian measure. If you have uh, a circle that has an arc of that much. So if you have this circle here, that's really great. Let's make it a different color. There's your circle. If you have a radius of 14 and 20 miles around, let's do this. If you go 20 miles around that circle. So I'm guessing it's to about there somewhere. You can use your arc length formula to figure out what this angle is. Call that theta. So you got 20 and 14 here. Arc length is the radius times theta, right? An angle of, or, or the angle is arc length divided by radius. If you have the arc length equal to the radius, the angle's one. The arc length here is longer than the radius, right? You have 20 miles, 14 miles. That's going to give you something like, I mean, you can go to your calculator for that. That is going to give you something like 1.428571, I'm guessing. So let's say approximately 1.4 uh, radians. That's in radians. Radians just the ratio of the lengths, right? There's actually no units on radians. You can just say the angle is 1.4 if you want. But All right. Moving along, next one. How far will 70 centimeter diameter bicycle tire? Now this is important to realize this is diameter. If you have a tire, it's a circle obviously, right? There's your circle. You've got, that's 70 centimeters. If it turns through an angle of 225, essentially what this is asking you is, if you turn through, if you have an arc length, right? You want to know what arc length it is? Okay, how far will it roll, right? It's going to roll on the ground here, an equal distance to the arc, right? So the distance along the ground that it rolls, that's what you want. That's the same as if you, uh, as you, you want to know how far, what, you know, what's this angle here? 225 degrees is that long, right? Something around there. Let's just say it's like that. Okay, so we have two things here. We have theta in degrees, 225. We have the diameter, right? Diameter is 70, so radius is 35. If you want to work with this uh, arc length formula, A equals R theta, because what we want is this, arc length, right? We don't know the arc length, which is also the distance that it rolls on the ground. If you want to figure this out, you need the angle in radians. 225, you can write as 225 pi over 180. Or in other words, if you were to reduce that, 225 over 180, 5 pi over 4. So you've got 35 centimeters, 5 pi over 4. Multiply all that out, and you can get what you're looking for here. So 35 times 5 times, we don't need times, but times pi, divide by 4, 137.4, let's say, 137.4 centimeters, units are centimeters, right? All right, let's move on to this next one here. Second topic here, related to this, but radian measure, um, working with angles. In radians and degrees, converting back and forth, sort of the same topic, but how many degrees an angle of 3.7 radians? If it's if it's a decimal like that, obviously you can't uh, hope to, it's, it's not a pi fraction, you, you can't hope to do it by memory here, but 3.7 radians. If you want a method for how to do this, if it's not one you recognize right away, think of the fact that 180 degrees equals pi radians and just use that as a conversion factor 
So if you want to, if you got radians and you want to change it, put the put the radians on the bottom and put the degrees on the top and multiply that out. 3.7 times 180 divided by pi. Because if you got radians, again, radians aren't units, but you can think about it like they are, that that's going to cancel. All right. There's lots of other ways to convert uh, one to the other, but that's a that's one method anyways. So go to your calculator and so we got 3.7 times 180 divided by pi except I have hit the wrong button that's the one I oh what is going on now why would a person like me hit the second function key there we go I'm paying attention Does that look right make sure you think about it whether it looks right 211 degrees, 3.7 is a little bit more than halfway around, right? 211 degrees is a little more than halfway around. Look at that, it rounds to 12, basically. If I had to do that to one decimal place, 12.0. So we're going to say roughly, because I'm rounding it, 212.0 degrees. All right? 150 degrees in radians. That's one that you should recognize as a... Uh, as a value that, you know, an exact value. 150 degrees in radians. If you recognize that it's 5 pi over 6, that is great. If you don't recognize that it's 5 pi over 6, you can do the conversion that we just did, only it's going to be the other way around. You're going to have 180 degrees on the bottom, pi radians on the top. Essentially, if you have an angle in degrees, you can just go that pi over 180. It's 150 pi over 180. 150 degrees is 150 pi over 180. If you had some other angle, 123 degrees would be 123 pi over 180. You're basically just saying it's that fraction of pi, which is half a turn. All right, so let's get rid of that because it has nothing to do with this one, really. If you reduce that 150 over 180, you get 5 6, right? 5 pi over 6. All right. Next. What are two coterminal angles for 4.81217 radians? Two coterminal well, is an infinite number of coterminal angles. Two of them you could um, you could come up with pretty quickly, or just adding or subtracting. Uh, if you have that angle, uh, 4.8 is probably somewhere right here. Okay, it's it's in quadrant four because 3 pi over 2 is about 4.71. It wouldn't hurt to know these numbers. 3.14, roughly. That one you probably know. Half of that, 1.57. Or one and a half of that, roughly 4.71. So you can tell that it's in quadrant 4. So you're looking at that angle. Even if you don't know that, all you need to do is add multiples of 2 pi. Right? If you add on another multiple of 2 pi here, you're going to get to that angle. Really, if you want an expression for this, you can just say 4.8217 plus n times 2 pi. Or if you want to be like mathematicians, they would write it like this. 2 pi n. For the, just whatever reason they put things in that order. Constant numbers, and numbers we know. Sort of weirder numbers like pi. And then things that are variables. Right, where n is an integer, you should probably say where n any integer. I won't get into how to write that in symbol form today. Uh, it just asks for two, so any two. If you go to your calculator and just add on multiples of two pi. So if you start with, if you start with four point eight two one seven, and you just add on multiples of 2 pi plus 2 pi. Okay, there's the one bigger, right? 11.1 .1 roughly. If we want it to, depends, if we want it to as, as accurate as it was there, we should probably go 11.1049 for rounding that. Okay, so that could be one that's one bigger. 11.1049. Um, well, we better not say equals because it's just, you know, these are examples. Or you could actually go the other way, right? You could add on 2 pi again. I think if I just hit enter, it adds on 2 pi again, and again, and again. Any one of those are, you know, coterminal because they end in the same place. Or you could have started and subtracted, right? You could have subtracted, could have started with 
eight, two, one, seven. You could have gone uh, minus two n, right? Minus two, sorry, not two n, two pi. We'll do it once, okay? All of those are coterminal as well. All right, I won't bother writing them down there as you can see any of those, all right? Next one here. What's the reference angle for 17 pi over 12? Probably a good idea to write it or draw a little quick picture of what it looks like. 17 pi over 12, it's definitely more than, since that's bigger than that, more than halfway around, right? This would be 12 pi over 12. All the way around to there would be 24 pi over 12. To here, this is the key one to think about which quadrant you're in. That would be 18 pi over 12, one and a half times x. All right, so it's a bit less than that. So it's right there. And you got to think, okay, I need to go back to the x-axis. So we're thinking this little angle in here, right? You don't you don't count the angle as being negative, even though I drew the arrow that way. I think reference angle is always positive regardless. That little bit left over there, if you have this is 17 pi over 12, and that's 12 pi over 12, the red part's got to be 5 pi over 12, right? That's that reference angle. Um, what are the four angles between 0 and 2 pi that have reference angle 3 pi over 8? Well, again, draw the picture. And... I guess it wouldn't hurt if I made this a little bigger, eh? Now that I think about it. Make some more space here. Might as well see what we're doing. Okay, so we got, we want four angles. We want one in each quadrant, okay? Zero and pi over two, as in within one full turn. So we want one over here. We want one there. I mean, I'll draw it roughly correct, I hope. That one that one and something like that right so we want this angle that angle that angle and that angle right all of those will have one drawn one at a time here let's go with that one first obviously that one the first one is itself three pi over eight okay first one comes right over here three pi over eight second one is going to be whatever halfway around minus three pi over eight is if that's three pi over eight, right? So we're looking for this angle. If that's three pi over eight, I didn't do a great job of drawing this to scale because three pi over eight is almost halfway up to the top. Now that I realize, not that that matters, if this was three pi over eight, I'm gonna have five pi over eight left over. Five pi over eight, right? That's the second one. Third one. Oops, that's not great. I guess not that we need that in there right now. Third time, it's kind of embarrassing. I get a better way to do it here. All right. Third one right around to here. We gotta go halfway around, which is pi, or eight pi over eight, right? If we're talking about eight, plus another three pi over eight. This little that little angle in here is 3 pi over 8. So we got 8 pi over 8, 3 pi over 8. So that angle all the way around to there is going to be 8 plus 3, right? 11 pi over 8. And then the last one all the way over in the other quadrant there. Why do I keep doing that? Back to this other way here. Uh, all the way around to here. We want that. If this little angle is 3 pi over 8, and all the way around would be... 16 pi over 8, that's going to be 16 pi over 8 minus 3 pi over 8, right? All the way around is twice as much as pi. 2 pi is 16 pi over 8. So then that angle to there has to be 16 minus 3, 13 pi over 8, right? And last one here in this section is... Can an angle have a reference angle of two radians? Well, that's interesting. I think if you think about this, can you have a reference angle of two radians? Well, the, the reference angle is always the, the shortest way to the x-axis. So if you have an angle here, reference angle itself. If you have an angle that's here, 
see that angle. Reference angle is back there. The biggest reference angle you can have is if you're talking about an angle that's right there or right there because that's the farthest kind of angle that it's going to take to get back to the x-axis. However, this is pi, or in other words, roughly 3.14. So this is a half of pi, or 1.57. The biggest reference angle you're ever going to have is 1.57, roughly, or half of pi. You can't have a re reference angle of 2, because that would be an angle bigger than a kind of a quarter turn here, right? 2 radians is that much. So you're never going to have that kind of a reference angle. All right, that is parts, well, one and two of this. Hopefully it helped.